grade to large star shooter and increases range, damage, and speed. And I'm putting an exclamation mark there. And okay, let's go back to abilities. Upgrade and let's commands. Let's change this execute button to be. Oh, it's already updated. Sorry, I realized that. Uh, the cost, however, is going to be 10. So you gotta. This is where after you've sort of done all the technical stuff of your map, you come back and you balance it. I mean, is this upgrade justifiable for 10 because it shoots faster and has more range, or is it better just to keep building? So you gotta kind of balance it out yourself once you play your map enough. Um, anyways. That should be okay. And I'm going to get rid of this alert because it's quite annoying because it doesn't have a proper icon. You don't need to be notified about it. And let's see. Commands. Did I? Hmm. No, that's right. Um, so we got this set up. Info. So this is where we need to change our unit to be a L for large star shooter enabled. So I'm going to make the upgrade time take five. So I'm going to just put five for all these, all these ones that have a hundred in them, because a hundred's a bit long, if you ask me. I don't know. It is five. Oh, okay. That looks good. And uh, enabled. Okay. All right. And one thing you'll notice is that the requirements of have hive is still there. So actually what I forgot to do right here is press this little X. There we go. So now it won't require a hive. Um, so now we have our upgrade. And we can, I believe now, go back to our units and delete that and find our small star shooter. Oops. And add this ability in there. And add, press U. Upgrade, there we go. Go to our command card. Make a new button here. And I believe it's going to be under Zerg because I left it there. There, uh, hold on. There that is. Ability. Upgrade, there we go. Done, save, good. Um, now, what will happen in game is that your model won't change when you do this. So. Uh, again, another actor related issue. Um, you need to go to the small star shooter actor. Oops. Uh, where is the small star? Star. I'm just going to search for star. That's good. Ah, uh, you know what? I left it as photon cannon. Ah, darn. So, anyways, uh, Let's go to, let's, we have to do one for the large star shooter and one for the small star shooter. Um, so, uh, let's go to, uh, where is it? Events. And let's add an event. And this is going to be, so this one got added right here. And, um. Hold on, I'm looking at my notes while I do this because even I'm sort of sketchy on this stuff like this. This is sort of pretty deep data editor stuff. Um, so we need to do ability morph, source name none, and then when it finishes, and we want to add a term inside here, and term will be morph2, and the unit we're morphing to is this building right here. And once that, if that's true, um, we want to create. So if this ability, if this morph ability finishes, and it's a morph to a large star shooter, then it will create this this actor for this for this large star shooter, and for our photon cannon, which uh, is actually set to our small star shooter unit. But because I d modified it and didn't duplicate, it still appears as photon cannon. We actually need to go into events and do a similar sort of thing. Um, and this event will be the ability morph finish add a term M from morph two and it's morphing to a large star shooter and uh, what do we want to do we want to destroy so it's going to destroy this actor 
and that should be good. Press OK and save. So um, with everything here, uh, this should pretty much cover the data editor. Um, I rushed through everything, but hopefully it made sense. And next we're going to be hitting the trigger editor. Um, one thing that everybody should notice is that the order in here is like the list. It doesn't really matter, but the order of your actions in your triggers do matter. So I've got a few questions about that that people have asked me, and uh, the order in here does matter. So um, make sure you follow this pretty closely. And I'm just going to rename this, and I just got rid of the mealy crap there. So I'm going to make all my global variables first so uh, to save time here. And I'll try and explain it along the way. So wave unit types. This is our variable to define the wave types. And we're going to make it size 4 because I'm only having 4 waves. Uh, you'll need to increase these if you increase the number of units that you're making to attack. Copy paste, F2 to rename, and wave messages. Um, actually, I'm not going to do wave messages. I'm just going to do it simpler. So ignore what I just said about wave messages. Uh, wave spawn amount. Let's make this an integer. So this is going to be the amount for each wave. So wave, th uh, wave three might make one guy, and wave two might make fifteen. You know, depends if it's a boss wave or something like that. Uh, wave bounty amount. So how much does this wave give? Boss waves might give more, and we'll leave that as an integer. And control paste and F two to rename. And let's do current wave. So it's just going to be a number, not array. And then lives. And lives is going to be 20 to start. Good. And then a little thing I like to do for organization is just to put that there. Just put a bunch of dashes. Okay, and copy paste. And let's make one called kill board. And we all know what this is. It's going to be our leaderboard. Copy paste. And then do player kills. This is going to be integer size 2, because we have two players. Um, and then copy my little divider. And then copy that. And let's make this our wave timer. And just timer, not array. Copy paste that. And wave timer window. And just make this a timer window. Little divider again. And this is pretty obvious what these are. Uh, so race choose dialog. This is going to be a dialog. Race choose dialog buttons. And these are going to be dialog items and make it size. I don't know, make it size two for now because it's only going to be two races. But you'll need to increase this if you're uh, adding more. And then one more thing we need is the builder spawn points. And this is P point. And two is good too because we only have two races. So um, now let's go back and I'm going to just drag this down here and put a little divider just to be nice and clean. So in our init trigger now, um, right from the game initialization, we want to do a map visibility, create revealer for player one in the entire map. So we want the map to be entirely visible for player one and for player two. And then copy paste again, and let's change this to player modify player property. Let's set the player one minerals to, and th I've just got these numbers from balancing and playing the map beforehand. Um, player two minerals set to 18. Okay. Oh, and while I'm here, um, sorry about this. I'm going back to the data editor. Uh, once again, why why you should watch all my tutorials before. Um, posting any errors. Um, I'm just going to check that our large star shooter um, has the right repair resource cost. Yeah, that's wrong. It should be 10 um, because he can sell as well and you want the large star shooter to give back 10. I mean to give back 5, 50% of that, not 2. Um, anyway, so that's just another data editor thing I missed. 